Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Carl's Tech Shed. Now what I've got today for you is a Panasonic AG7350. Uh, I've got about at least three of these, well I've got three of them here. I've got one here and I've got two down here and I think I've got another one in the loft in the house. Um, I picked these up about a couple of years ago from a studio which was closing down in West London. Um, I think I only paid about five or each for them or something, but as far as I'm aware they all work. Uh, I've powered them all up and run a tape for them and they seem to be okay. Um, so I think it's just the fact they were a little bit old that they were getting rid of them. Now uh, we've got, uh, on this side we've got the rocker switch which is for power, um, which is a bit unusual compared to um, consumer grade equipment because you probably would have had a little soft touch button, but this one's actually a mains rocker switch, um, which is in the off position, um, it's, I think it's, uh, yeah, that's the off position, whereas when it's on it's, it's flush with the rest of the unit. Now we've got a couple of quarter inch uh, mic inputs here, we've got a quarter inch um, headphone port, we've got a couple of level meters. Now level meter number two you can actually change from an audio meter to a tracking, um, uh, to a tracking display so you can tell if the tracking is off. Um, as you'll see it says it on tracking max on there but it doesn't say it on that one. So if I've obviously used some good, um, good quality meters here because I haven't used the same one in both. Now we've got uh, audio channel 1 and channel 2, this is probably for the microphone here. Now uh, just across here we've got some um, illuminated buttons which illuminate from behind. We've got audio dub, play, record and so on. But we've also got this one here called uh, search. Now when I've used this, uh, if you press the search button that will illuminate. Uh, you turn this left to right and it will actually skip through anything from a single frame and right up to sort of um, four speed, uh, four times speed. Uh, sorry, yeah, this one is uh, this little dial here, this little jog dial, um, skips it through frame at a time. And this one you can use to control it up to four speed, um, fast forward or reverse. Now on the back there's quite a lot of ports, so I'll turn this around in a moment, I'll let you have a look at those. Okay, now uh, I've also turned it around after I've taken the lid off. Now the first thing that you can see is um, everything is on uh, separate PCBs, so they're designed to be removed and replaced if and when they fail. Now this is quite common in, um, in high grade equipment because I suppose when you're buying one of these new for maybe two or three thousand pounds you don't want to have to replace it every couple of years just because a simple component fails. It's a lot easier and a lot cheaper to replace a single board. Um, it's also for reliability so um, a studio or a uh, someone like that can um, hold on to a number of spare parts and spare boards um, which are more likely to go so that as and when they break down they can quickly uh, replace them. I'll also point out that the, uh, the lid only has two screws holding it on although it's very secure so you can get to these very quickly. One other thing I'll point out this, uh, at this time is that this is also 19 inch rack mountable so you could have these in a 19 inch rack now I'll just remove a couple of these boards, uh, I'm not actually sure what these are yet. Um, this one looks like some sort of video decoding equipment, um, it's all analogue of course, these chips all look like analogue ICs, um, probably for amplification as such. We've got a couple of uh, resin covered um, ICs here which are sort of um, hybrids, uh, so that's number three. Now in the bottom here as you can see there's room for another connector there and there's actually the fittings for another board here That's, that probably would have been on a later model so I'll just drop this back in there this one's probably going to be similar um, probably maybe video number two I'm guessing uh, let's have a look yeah video two uh, this one's got uh, a little Faraday cage in here probably with some um, tuning equipment something like that in there. There's also another hybrid here which um, this is more of a plastic, it's more of a semi-solid plastic. Now we've got a small IC here made by Mitsubishi. Uh, that's pro I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not 100% sure on the part number but I'm guessing that would probably be some sort of um, amplification of video signals or something like that. Considering these are video boards I think it's, it's, it's uh, safe to say that's something to do with video amplification. 
now we've got the last board on this side anyway. Um, this is more common, uh, looks, looks more similar to the, to the previous board, number two. Um, it's got the same, well not the same chip, but it's got a, a similar sort of chip there um, for amplification. We've got a lot of capacitors here um, as, as we have on the other boards. We've got a couple more hybrids over here. Um, we've got another little IC there with some transistors on the back. Now we've got a lot of these little dials which are probably for setting up um, and uh, configuring the different boards. Because they're analogue, um, each machine will be very slightly different, especially with the head assembly and such. So these will need to be configured separately when they're first installed. We've got another Mitsubishi chip down there which looks like an analogue um, analog IC, which is going to be for amplification and such. And we've got another cable which comes off here and it looks like this goes onto the uh, motor which controls the eject mechanism. Just pop that bellard back in there. Now I'll turn this around. As you can see we've got two more boards here at the back. Let me just try to see if I can get this off. Now these are more likely going to be for um, video input signals rather than amplification of video um, sorry coming off of the tape. Let's have a look. Right now we've got uh, a Mal MacLord chip, that's unusual. Um, we've got some smaller ICs over here. Um, these all look like analog amplification chips. Um, some more over here. But this one I'm not quite sure what this is. I've never heard of this one before so um, it'd be interesting if anyone knows what that is. Uh, on the side, on the other side here, we've got loads more capacitors. A lot more on here than any other board, in fact. Um, we've also got some more hybrids. Um, we've got a lot of these little variable resistors at the top. Um, these have various markings on them. Um, as you can see, they've got things such as channel two, channel one, record, record, uh, PAL. Yeah, so these are all going to be for video signal inputs and things like that. We've got another cable coming off of here which looks like it's going into the um, tuning mechanism, uh, sorry, tuning uh, circuitry just there. I'll just drop this board back in. And we've got another one just here as well. I'll tell you what, it might help if I pop that one back in first. There we go. Let's see what this one is. I'm not expecting these to be anything special there. After all, this is only a VHS recorder, but it's uh, interesting for people to see. Now, this one's going to be a bit more difficult to get out, so I'll probably just show you what's on there. Um, we've got a small relay on here as well. I'm not quite sure what that's for at the moment, but I can probably imagine that's something to do with the um, eject mechanism or something like that. Um, we've also got a set of tuning, um, tuning variable uh, probably variable capacitors, variable resistors, something like that along here. We've got another, we've got another Faraday cage here. Um, more ICs, another, oh that's a Sony, that's unusual. Um, we've got another uh, integrated circuit here and here. Loads more capacitors and things like that. So, so far nothing overly unusual um, for a VCR of this age and quality. Let me just get this back in. There's a lot of cables connected to these, so uh, it can be quite difficult to get these back in. Sorry, just give me a moment. Okay, I'm going to power this up now so you can see what happens when I put a VHS tape into it. Um, by the way, this is SVHS. Uh, this is an SVHS recorder, and this is only a VHS tape, but the two are completely compatible. Um, SVHS was simply a more uh, a higher quality version of VHS, which was uh, a as well as beta was also used in studios to achieve that higher quality than standard VHS would. Now as I power it on you'll notice that as I said before the rocker switch. Okay I'm going to power this up now so you can see what happens when I put a VHS tape into it. Um, by the way this is SVHS, uh, this is an SVHS recorder and this is only a VHS tape but the two are completely compatible. Um, SVHS was simply a more uh, a higher quality version of VHS which was uh, a, as well as beta was also used in studios to achieve that higher quality than standard VHS would. 
Now as I power it on, you'll notice that, as I said before, the rocker switch is, uh, is actually, it lays flat when it's powered on. Now the little meters have lights behind them, they're not LEDs, they're actually light bulbs because this is a bit before um, when LEDs were bright enough to illuminate a meter uh, such as that. Um, the flicker that you see on the eject button, um, I can only see that on the camera, not in, not in, uh, not in real life, so to speak. Um, so that's simply uh, an artifact on the camera. Now we've got a little display over here, part of it is blue, part is uh, green. Now I'll pop this tape in and I'll let you watch what happens. Okay, so what just happened there was the tape was pulled out of the video cassette. It was then pushed against the reed head, which is just here. Um, now we've got a couple of other heads, which I'll go into in a minute. But what this head does is it's actually tilted to one side. So this records uh, symmetrically. So we've got um, the lines are, are, are not vertical or horizontal there, sort of slanted as it goes across the tape. So um, that's how that works on there. We've also got uh, another head here, which will be the record head. Uh, the audio head should be just over here, just there. I don't know whether you can see that little one, that little head just down there. I'll just zoom in on that. Yeah, so that, that's going to be the audio head just down there. Now, over here we've got the eject motor, which operates the mechanism to load and unload the tape. Now even though we haven't pressed play or anything else, this head will spin constantly as long as there's a tape within the machine. Now um, this is mainly to reduce the time that it takes to um, play the tape, but uh, it, does, it does cause significant wear on the tape, especially if it's held in one place for a long time. Now these heads are relatively smooth, but uh, as, as one reviewer um, described VHS, it's uh, rust on a bit of sellotape. So it's quite delicate, really. Um, but being analog, it can it, it has a certain tendency to still work after a while, even if it is damaged. It will just uh, degrade the picture quality, and that's how you get uh, uh, sort of static and interference on the tape. Now I'm just going to press play, and you'll see this. Will, the only difference you should see really is the tape will start to move from that side to that side of the tape. that's it everything else has stayed still because it's already in place when the tape is inserted now if I press this search button which I mentioned earlier now I'll then speed this up a bit and you'll see as I bring it to the center just here it's still so that would be a freeze frame now I'm actually quite impressed with the freeze frame on this because uh, when I've seen it on the TV uh, it's actually very high quality, it's almost DVD-like, there's no interference at all. So it must be down to the fine-tuning of the uh, amplification and um, the other boards over here which cause that to minimise the static and interference. Now as I speed this up, you'll see it move ever so slightly, it's actually moving very slightly there. And as I turn it a little bit more, it will go a bit faster and faster still until it's running at four speed so that's actually fast forwarding through at um, four times its normal speed now I think after two speed there's there's actually no audio on this but up to two speed it starts to sound a bit a um, bit like a chipmunk but after after two speed it, it automatically shuts off the audio signal so you don't get um, highly distorted and high-pitched audio coming from this well overall it's a very high quality bit of kit and if you're thinking of buying one of these, even if it's just for converting some old VHS tapes, I'd certainly recommend this. Um, I've actually found a website which is, which is selling these. Um, they're selling them for, oh I can't remember, it's like £347, something like that. Let me just have a look. 
Right, where are we? Yeah, here we go. Now this is used. It's a Panasonic AG7350. Uh, open system, same thing. Yeah, this is in Germany, and they're selling it for €414 Euros or $548. Uh, convert that into British pounds today, and that's £347. So, not bad for a £5 investment. Um, to have a bit of kit for a fiver which is potentially worth about 350 quid um, bearing in mind I've got at least three of them so um, I may dispose of some of them on eBay at some point um, if I want to try and get some other equipment I must admit I don't really use them well, I certainly don't use all three of them I, I might keep one of them um, but if anyone's interested just uh, drop me a line because they're all working um, I'll clean them all up and uh, I'm sure you'll be very happy with it well thanks for watching and uh, if you see any other stuff around here which you would like me to take a review of and uh, take apart and let you see what's inside it please let me know I'm more than happy to do that and also if you could subscribe to my channel I'd appreciate it um, because I've got a lot of videos which I'll be uploading soon and uh, I wouldn't want you to miss any of them so thanks for watching.